there she is, all done and built up. Looking pretty good, if I don't say so myself. Got the GoPro 9 on there. We got a battery, it's not the one that they recommend. Props installed and looking good. Yeah, I think this thing's gonna tear it up. Can't wait to fly it. So we're setting up, we're gonna fly it for the first time right now. Very first impression from that hover test. Oh, we got a monster on our hand. Let's get this in the air with some FPV. Everything's intact. So the tune wasn't perfect. There's definitely some work that needs to be done there. Obviously, this is the first flight I've done with it, and I didn't do anything other than just put in the default tune and take off. But holy buckets. Like I was just tearing it, tearing it up, like hitting gaps through the trees, over the house, split S. I did a brief dive and like all of that stuff. Like this thing took it like a champ. And then I slowed down and did a little bit of cine whooping stuff through the garage where I'm actually flying through my kids swing and over the green screen and through the tiny whoop gates with this thing that is nuts like that was annoyingly comprehensive for how well this thing flies that was so sick I am so stoked about this already uh, and I haven't even begun yet <laughs> One of the things that sets this build apart most is that it has both bottom end and top end resolution. So at the bottom end it flies a lot more like a squirt or a traditional cine whoop. And you're able to do these really, really precise movements to keep it nice and calm and consistent and not have those giant throttle movements where you know you can you can see the camera moving up and down because you're correcting for throttle. However, when you hit it and you let it rip, it has that top end throttle resolution as well where you can kind of do split S as you can do big five inch sort of drill maneuvers and as a result the combination of those two things is very powerful right it's it becomes a this drone kind of consumes all compare it to something like the terraplane where the terraplane has a lot of that five inch that top end precision but it lacks a little bit of that low end precision and I think that's where this thing is gonna shine is it's gonna be able to play both worlds both worlds of the terraplane and squirt so we are here at Merritt Park, continuing our testing of the Cine Ma from Newbie Drum. Next up, I think Winston's gonna fly it, so we're just getting everything prepped up. Then he's gonna tear it up over a lot of water. Don't crash it, please, Winston. Because of the low profile aspect of it not having ducts and exclusively having carbon fiber arms, especially vertical carbon like fiber arms where the airflow that style. goes through both from aerodynamically flying and from the downwash from the props doesn't get in the way of that thrust, it actually flies really, really well because you don't have that drag. You don't have any kind of external force pushing on the drone. It allows it to be able to kind of cut through the air and feel like it is ductless, even though it still does have some protection in that it has the carbon fiber frame. So it's got this great happy medium of, I'm slightly protected, but not perfectly protected, and I can still fly really well, both on the top and bottom. Yeah, so I mean, the thing could definitely use a tune, but overall, from what I can tell, not having the ducks on there, 
small lightweight frame is definitely noticeable. With these motors, you get plenty of punch out. So the one thing about having a very powerful squirt or a Cinewhoop is too much power down low is a bad thing. It makes it hard to be controllable when you're close to objects or just in that lower throttle range. This thing has the power, but you gotta wind it up to get it, which is a good thing when you have a squirt, in my opinion. Overall, the noise, you definitely still have the, the three inch shrill, but it definitely seems like it's a little bit more subdued. Not quite as loud or irritating, but it's still there. Oh, out of the water, out of the water, out of the water. <laughs> I was having fun. I wasn't paying to the voltage and I definitely just flew that to the end. But what I was thinking about in my mind is just like, it was four minutes of the flight timer. The thing's getting great flight performer or flight time out of me having fun with it. So it's definitely an improvement on flight time. I think the, the, the loss in weight and drag helped with that. I don't know, I'm pretty impressed. That thing's nice. So I, the drone I typically fly for a lot of the gigs that I do is a, the Drone Co. Productions, the Slam Squirt. So it's a, the Shendron Squirt with smaller ducks on it. And I also have the wider pancake motors. The reason I like that setup is it's very controllable down low, but it's not like a two stroke where you wind it up and the power is super high in the top end. It's very predictable and linear power curve. And having the smaller ducks on the slammed one versus the standard makes it easier so that uh, you have less resistance to the wind and moving around. So this is similar to a slam squirt in the fact that it doesn't have that big aerodynamic surface like the ducks to get caught by the wind or to slow you down whenever you're moving or maneuvering it in ways that aren't just straightforward. So the other comparison where it's similar to the slam squirt is that it doesn't have that surface area of the ducks get affected by the wind and also when you change movements or slide backwards it's not going to be as affected by that so it has its pros and its cons i still kind of prefer my slam squirt just because it's a little more predictable and linear power curve and the props are a little bit better protected than what you have on something like this not a huge deal but something to think about so i don't think it quite has like your five inch performance compared to a squirt it definitely is getting a lot closer to that though it's not a five inch, but it's pretty darn close. If you wind it up and give it some throttle, these it, it moves around pretty nice. And one other thing I noticed about this is I didn't look at the clock to see how long the flight was until over four minutes. That's a four minute flight on a Cinewhoop with a full size GoPro with a battery in it that I don't have to worry about getting the thing wet. So that's definitely one thing I will say I noticed is the battery life on it was very good. And I wasn't just cruising around slowly. Like I was, I was hitting the throttle and having fun with it. So the big benefit I'm noticing on this is gonna be the battery life seemingly so far is a lot better. Overall, pretty impressed with it so far. Gotta get some more batteries on it before I really make a decision on whether I get more of these or more squirts. We'll see. So on board our Cinema frame are the Newbie Drone 2350KV1408 smooth motors. I have these on the X8 Shen Drone's big baby uh, with two of the Newbie Drone Infinity 200 ESCs kind of wired together into a flight controller that could support X8 in 20 by 20 format. So like that was actually a pretty sweet build. But the, uh, so I've got those 2350 KV motors. Then I have the Infinity 200 stack, which has their F7 flight controller as well as a four in one, uh, both 20 by 20. And using the hardware that those actually come with, it actually fits in here perfectly. So that was really nice. Sometimes I find that the hardware that it comes with to mount the flight controller is a little bit too long, but they left enough room in their, their own frame for their own hardware to fit it all. So that was a great choice. Then I have the uh, Cadex Vista Nebula, Cadex Nebula Pro in there with the, their camera as well as the, the antenna that comes with it. So that was really easy, literally just, actually I didn't get to just plug and play because you have to solder onto the uh, Vista kit, but then it plugs straight into the flight controller. Uh, and then there's a TBS Crossfire in there. Bringing this whole bird, uh, you know, actually pretty lightweight. I haven't actually te tested the weight yet, but we'll get uh, a weight compared to this and a Terraplane and a Slam Squirt and a uh, Shendron Squirt V2, all that good stuff. You can see all of those right here. Thanks, Paul, for doing that. Welcome back. Then in addition to the Crossfire Nano, I also have the uh, little baby Crossfire Immortal T antenna on there. All newbie drone stuff, all available from their store, and comes together to make a pretty kick-ass build. So in the end, I want to go over some pros, cons, conclusions, all that good stuff. First of all, the flight performance is amazing, both on the top end and bottom end, right? It has the ability to fly like a Shendron Squirt, and it has the ability to fly like a five inch or a Terraplane. Because it has good resolution both on the bottom and the top end, it's this great happy medium between a Shendron's Squirt and a five inch. You can do some of both, and I 
don't think it's necessarily a bad choice for either of those options. One of the biggest questions that I had when I started building it was, is this thing gonna be rigid enough, right? It's really tiny little pieces of carbon fiber, but once I got the frame put together and just started bending it just a little bit, it has a little bit of give, but I think it's enough give that it will bounce instead of break. I have not yet really had a huge crash with it, but just feeling it and feeling other frames that I've worked with in the past, I feel like it's gonna have just a little bit of bounce and it's gonna not necessarily snap right away. So I'm pretty excited about how rigid versus flexible it is because I think it's going to be the right happy medium to to not break but have a little bit of give and give a little bit of bounce if that makes sense that's one of the things I love the most about ducks is that when they hit something they kind of squish and bounce off of it another note that I'll make about the frame is that while it is kind of a pain to build it initially it's actually pretty easy to work on it once it's assembled right everything's pretty much exposed so you can just get in there and you know make a change like I accidentally didn't solder one of the motor wires up perfectly well the first time wanted to get in there and fix it literally just got in with a pair of tweezers and a soldering iron and just hit it without ever having to take anything off so that was really convenient compared to the squirt or equivalent drones it's much quieter because it doesn't have the resonance of the ducks the whole drone is quieter in flight which is a nice break i've had a lot of people comment about how loud the squirt is when i have it on set so i'm excited to have this available as an alternative that is a little bit quieter one of the things that i really like about the frame is the integrated gopro mount one it's really easy to get the gopro in and out of it and two it's set up so that you can change the angle of the gopro really really easily and those two things combined together really sell me on that part of it especially because i'm somebody who always wants to be flying a full-size gopro and not a naked gopro another thing that i really like about the frame is that it's nice and clean and professional looking i don't think that the 3d printed ducks on the squirt necessarily look that good especially once they're like filled with grass and kind of starting to deform from long time use this thing will just kind of remain the way it is it's going to look pretty consistent the whole time it's going to look good and I, I don't know i think there's value in it looking good when you're taking it on set with you and finally just the construction and the design of the thing overall is really good right it's got these cool interlocking carbon fiber bits it's got the actual gopro mount it's got the landing skids that are combined with the motors and combined with the frame actually to help both rigidity the ability to mount the motors and to have those landing skids all combined into one it's really really cool all right, moving on to some of the downsides. First of all, it was a huge pain to put together. Those little things where you have to like hold the nut in place inside of the frame, set the frame on, and then put a screw through, and then use that to kind of pull it together, which is like the only way to do vertical carbon fiber is a huge pain in the butt. And you have to do like 30 of them to get this whole frame together and for me oh man i don't know if i would want to build another one of these just because of how long it took to put the frame together i'm talking like an hour and a half just to screw everything together and then even then i put it together and i went too far and i put the actual plates that the camera mounts to but i had to take those back off build the drone and then put those back on and once all the electronics and stuff were in it was really hard to fit everything and for me personally that was just a bit of a pain when i'm one of those guys that just likes four screws in a top plate and then the rest is just a frame so a little bit of a nitpicky complaint on the assembly but once it's together it's really good the frame does have a vtx antenna mount built in but they skipped out on the rx antenna mount which i thought was kind of silly so i ended up zip tying it to something but like i was like hey come on if we're gonna have a vtx antenna let's have a rx antenna too Looking at the drone, battery mounting, or at least the battery mounting strap location seemed to kind of be an afterthought. They really pushed it way far back on the frame, which is not where I think is the best place to have the thing. Basically, you have the GoPro way at the front, the battery way at the back, and then there's kind of dead space in the middle. And in my experience with flying, I've found that pushing out that way to cross the yaw axis creates some really bad flight characteristics that I don't like. So even if it's not the most center of gravity like balance wise i always push the gopro and the battery together a little bit even if that makes it a little bit front heavy i find that drones fly better when the yaw axis weight is centralized as much as possible so i ended up having to put the battery strap in a place that was not good in fact it was quite silly <laughs> the way i have it set up that being said it's been working for me but that was kind of an afterthought i wanted to see a different place for the battery strap to mount uh, maybe in the version 2 Probably the biggest downside for me with this frame is that there's not quite enough protection from the props compared to a ducted drone. So with the squirt, for example, the props are way down inside the duct. It's very hard to reach your finger in and like, you know, hurt your finger or, you know, have it suck in some clothing or something like that when you're working with talent. Compared to the squirt, the Cinema has the 
props actually are above the highest point of the carbon fiber just a little bit and as a result you could very easily get that stuck into have some clothing stuck into it or have somebody accidentally get it touch it with their finger it would be for example much harder to like hand catch if you're doing like a catch and release sort of shot so i'm not saying that it's dangerous but i'm saying that it's a lot less secure i feel a lot less comfortable with it than i do traditionally with a shed drone squirt the downside for me specifically, and this is kind of a hill that I'm willing to die on, is that it only supports 20 by 20 stacks. I like 30 by 30 a lot, uh, so yeah, that's just kind of a, a me thing. <laughs> in addition, Winston was a little bit worried about the durability. While I was kind of more on the side of, I think it's going to bounce, he definitely didn't see it as necessarily as strong. And he also resonated with me that it definitely wasn't as safe as a squirt. And one other note is, for whatever reason, my Shendron squirts fly pretty well on, like, stock Betaflight tune. Like, people ask me for my PIDs, and I'm like, it's literally stock 4.2. This one needs a little bit of work, especially on the pitch axis. I'm not sure what it was about that, but I got to put a little bit of work into the tune to make sure that that's working well. Uh, if you guys want to see what that tune is, maybe we'll make a later video showing you how to build this bad boy and then how to tune it. I want to thank everybody for watching this video about the newbie drone cinema. We've really enjoyed putting it together, playing with it, and experimenting. I'm definitely not going to tear this apart and put all the parts back into something else. I like what it is for its unique ability to have that low end and top end at the same time. I've got a shoot coming up in a couple days. So I'm going to bring it on there and I'm going to use it for that. I'm very excited. So I'll kind of hopefully I'll be able to give you some notes on what it was like using it in a professional environment. If you found any of this exciting or interesting or you're going to buy anything from Newbie Drone, please consider using my links in the description below. They're all affiliate links and if you choose to buy something from them, it gives us a little bit of kickback, allows us to make more videos like these. And as always, please consider subscribing, liking, commenting, all of those good things help this video get in front of more people so that we can get more people to stay flying.